Hi, I'm Sebastian Levy, and I'm a data scientist at Microsoft Azure. Today, I will be presenting our work on predictive and adaptive failure mitigation to avert production cloud VM interruption on behalf of all authors of the paper. Today, we will be looking at improving the customer experience in Microsoft Azure by preventing VM interruptions. Let's first have an overview of our cloud platform. One key characteristic is its massive scale with more than 60 regions throughout the world, millions of physical machines and hundreds of millions of VMs running on top of it. In addition to the large scale, Azure's cloud is composed of a wide variety of nodes from hardware characteristic to workload patterns to health history. This creates a strong heterogeneity in nodes behavior. Under such heterogeneity, we need a generic way to measure our customer experience. While traditional availability is essential, we found that the VM interruption are the most significant source of pain for customers, especially if the VM reboots. For example, two short interruption will impact more than one longer one. Why? Because of the frustration of repeating interruption, but also because application can take a much longer time to recover from them. Given the importance of avoiding interruption, whole node failures are particularly impactful. When the whole node goes down, like in this example, when a disk fails, all the VM running on it will get rebooted. Trying to prevent such disproportionate impact of node failures is critical given the scale of our cloud. Let's see how our example would be traditionally dealt with. After the failure, the node will be running diagnostics and finally all VMs will be migrated out to repair the node. More generally, diagnostic will run first, delaying the mitigation for all impacted VMs. In such workflow, all VMs will be rebooted and stay down for the whole diagnostics process. One fix used in the literature to avoid potentially long VM downtime is to mitigate the action at the time of the failure before running diagnostics. In our example, we would migrate all VMs at failure time, which would significantly reduce the downtime. However, for other issues like firmware bug, such mitigation could lead to much more downtime than a simple restart. More importantly, all VM would still reboot. To improve on this, we can use failure prediction to determine what mitigation should be taken upon failure. In our example, a disk failure prediction model would flag the node as having a suspected bad disk. If the failure occurs, the mitigation can be taken according to the suspected issue, limiting each VM downtime. However, again, VM will still get rebooted. And in case of a wrong prediction, a suboptimal mitigation could still be used. To improve our previous attempt, we need to start acting before the node fails. In our example, we would block allocation at predict time, use live migration on eligible VM, and force the remaining one migration after seven days. This static approach was used in Azure for years with success. However, while this approach can avoid some of the interruption and largely decrease the VM downtime, it is still suboptimal. All proactive actions have some costs like capacity, VM reboots, or pauses. And in case of false positive, it would likely create more harm than good. In addition, even if it is effective, can we do better? There is a fundamental trade-off when selecting the action. The more aggressively we try to prevent a potential reboot, the more impact we create on false positive. To overcome this trade-off, we try to answer three questions. Is there a mitigation strategy effective on all scenarios? How can we assess if a mitigation is truly effective? Even if a mitigation is effective, can we do better? Would that change with time? In our search for a generic mitigation, we try to design the most reasonable mitigation in case of a suspected hardware failure. First, we would block new VM allocation, and we would live migrate all eligible VM. We would then wait for seven days for remaining customer to intentionally move their VM out, and finally force the remaining VMs out to push the node to repair. Although this would work well in some scenario, it is still quite impactful and would probably be harmful on false positive. Even if the node is bad, we can use more opportunistic mitigation if the failure is not imminent. Similarly, if the node has still not failed after seven days, maybe it is now healthy and we can unblock the allocation. From such analysis, it is clear that each step of our mitigation could be done differently with potentially less impact for some specific cases. A generic mitigation will often be suboptimal. 
If many mitigations are possible, we need to test each action efficiency for different scenario. Given our node heterogeneity, a mitigation efficiency will depend on a wide variety of factors, some of them even being unobservable. The prediction precision and the live migration success rate depend, for example, on the real health of the hardware, which cannot be measured. Similarly, allocation depends on feature demand, which is hard to forecast accurately. This led us to formulate two key insights. In a heterogeneous and ever-changing cloud system, the effectiveness of a mitigation action is often probabilistic. Therefore, to select the near optimal mitigation, each possible action needs to be compared at scale with production workload. We therefore propose our solution to be a continuous probabilistic online minimization of customer impact, continuous to adapt to system changes, probabilistic to account for node heterogeneity, online to estimate true action behavior, minimization to focus on overall minimal impact, and customer impact to focus on real impacting failures. We introduced NARIA, our predictive and adaptive failure prevention solution following these principles. NARIA works in four layers. The prediction layer uses machine learning and simple expert tool to predict future node failures. The decision layer take that input and past observation to take the action that should minimize customer impact. This uses either A-B testing or multi bandit learning. The mitigation layer orchestrates a sequence of action decided. Finally, the impact assessment layer monitors the customer impact as a cost to be fed back to A-B testing and bandit for learning. It also uses both diagnostics and customer impact to retrain the ML model. An offline monitoring is performed based on end-to-end -end data to alert if the system behaves unexpectedly. With Shot Goal, we face many challenges. How do we define customer impact as a metric to minimize? How can we safely test action in production without causing large impact? How do we balance the exploration of possible action compared to the exploitation of the best action so far? How can we adapt to system changes? And how do we enable fast and scalable decision? While customer impact is generally measured as service availability, communication with customers shows that the number of interruption is more critical. Each interruption, even short, creates frustration. We monitor different types of interruption from full VM reboot to IO poses or blips. VM reboots is generally the most impactful since it typically lasts longer and it requires an additional time for application to recover. We can then define our main metric to be an annual interruption rate, dividing the number of observed interruption by the total uptime. When scoping this to a node level contribution, it can be simplified to simply counting the VM interruptions per node. In most of our experiments, we will consider only VM reboot interruption as they are much more disruptive than poses and blips. Let's now focus on prediction. NARIA uses two types of failure prediction. Expert rules are designed in collaboration with hardware specialists to predict specific hardware failures and are validated through correlation with customer impact. They generally consist on simple thresholds. In addition, NARIA uses machine learning prediction to predict more complex failure using diverse telemetry. To motivate the use of machine learning prediction, let's focus on the main limitation of expert rule, threshold. Setting a threshold is a challenging. A strict threshold will lead to low recall and short lead time, while a looser one will have more false positives. This is because we don't account for other correlated signals. Using a machine learning model, we can leverage a wider variety of signals to keep high precision with good recall and enough lead time. To do so, we made three major changes to literature failure prediction models. We use a comprehensive list of signals from different layers from the OS to the device. We only focus on predicting failure that create real customer impact. And to capture more complex pattern, we rely on non-handcraft features learned through our deep learning model, including a special attention layer, as well as a temporal convolutional one. You can refer to the paper for more information. Our mitigation options are quite varied and can be divided into three main categories. Allocation change, VM migration, and node reboot events. It is important to note that each action has different impact in terms of VM interruption and capacity and has different requirements. Some of the action provide less impactful alternative, but it, they will not work in all cases like live migration or soft kernel reboot. Naya's approach into mitigation action is to compose them into sequences of action we call composite action. 
These handle several what if conditions, such as what to do if the node gets empty and if the host OS crash unexpectedly. This is mainly to avoid illogical or dangerous combinations, combinations of action. It also simplifies the decision engine learning and provides easier override possibilities. Note that this composite action typically lasts for days. The example at the bottom visually summarizes the reasonable mitigation described earlier. We first block the allocation and live migrate all eligible VM. We then wait for some time. If the node gets empty, we send it to diagnostics. At the end of the wait time, and if the OS crash, we service heal all remaining VM and send the node to diagnostics. Let's now deep dive into the central component of our system, the decision engine. Its objective is simply to map each predicted bad node to the best composite action to minimize overall customer impact, in our case, the air metric. One key aspect of our decision engine is its ability to balance the exploration of different options and the expectation of the estimated best so far. Naya's engine is composed of two modes. AB testing allows a controlled static exploration of different actions and can determine if there is one action significantly better than the others based on one or more customer pain metric. multi amp Bandit dynamically determines the right trade-off between exploration and exploitation to minimize a single customer pain metric over time. AB testing works in four simple steps. For each request, we sample an action. We then observe the customer impact within an, observ an observation window of the decision time. Using available observation, we perform hypothesis testing. And if statist statistical significance is rich, we can then end the AB testing and always choose that action. If new actions get available or the impact of the action changes, a new A-B testing can be run. There are several adjustments that you made compared to traditional A-B testing. You summarize here some of the specificities. Our cost, contrib our cost attribution is done by observing impact within an observation window. This is simply to filter out reboots likely independent to that decision. Since a node can be predicted to fail multiple times by the same rule, we use stickiness to ensure the same node always uses the same action. This prevents us to violate the IID assumption. Given the complexity of the action orchestration, our IB testing framework tests for the decision, not the action. This means that the reboots will be observed even if the action is skipped, delayed, or later overridden. For more information, you can refer to the paper. While AB testing can achieve great performance, it is limited by its static exploration, then exploitation scheme. Because of this, it cannot leverage early observation in the A-B testing phase and cannot adapt to changes after statistical significance is reached. To improve on this, we logically extend this as a multi amp bandit problem where we dynamically assign a probability to each action based on the observation so far to minimize impact overall. As a side effect, in addition to leveraging early observation, it can adapt to system changes given a small tweak to account for temporality. The multi amp bandit framework is originated in the casino setting, where different machines provide different gain with unknown probabilities. The player goal is then to decide which machine to use to get the maximum money over a certain number of pools. Balancing between trying out the different machine and using what you believe is the best is key to such optimization. For our scenario, each pool would be a new node mitigation request, in each machine an available composite action, and the reward would be minus the customer impact we define. Optimizing our mitigation decision will then be like optimizing our casino reward. In Naria, to optimize our bandits, we use Thompson sampling, a traditional method that is simple, continuous, and explainable. While the casino parallel generally works, there are some important adaptations that were made to the classical bandit framework to better fit our scenario, namely accommodating temporal changes, delayed reward, and repeated prediction, as well as ensuring safe behavior. Given the time restrictions, I will focus on only one of these adaptations and will invite you to read the paper for more information on the others. As pointed earlier, using composite action and selecting which one are allowed prevents unsafe exploration of illogical and dangerous uh, choices. In addition, an override logic from other prediction or detection can help handle cases of increased severity. Within our bandit algorithm, we add an additional safety mechanism. First, we fall back to A-B testing mode if you have not seen enough observation data. Second, we can enforce a minimum and or maximum probability for each action. This allows for constrained exploration and to potentially adapt to changes. 
Here is the architecture of our system. I will highlight three points. The scalability from partitioning our online service by region, the speed from using PubSub, and the feedback loop for continuous adaptation. To evaluate our system overall, we first estimate the saving compared to the previous static mitigation by comparing the observed error to the error of the control group mapped to the whole fleet. With such estimation, we estimate a 26% saving using NARIA compared to previous static solution. The chart below shows the breakdown per experiment. We then evaluate our prediction performance. Overall, the precision of our system is around 80% and the recall around 50. Another interesting metric to monitor is the time to failure. Our machine learning model provides an average 48 hour lead time, which significantly improves our mitigation success. Next, we will compare our A-B testing and bandit strategies using counterfactual estimation. The chart shows the result per experiment. While bandit can only be applied in scenarios where a single KPI needs to be monitored, it does provide a significant improvement over A-B testing when applicable. Finally, let's focus on a quick case study to show the importance of adapting to system changes. One of our rules focuses on monitoring IO timeouts to predict future disk failures. Initially, our bandit algorithm were preferring the no op option. In mid March, unexpectedly, the unallocatable auction became more effective. Quickly, our bandit algorithm adjusted and eventually converged to using that action. All of this was done automatically without understanding why the action effectiveness had changed. During this time, the bandit outperformed the use of A-B testing, but also the use of other of the static mitigations. Operating NARIA for more than a year taught us some interesting learning. One key learning is that inevitably some decision will go wrong. Having an extensive monitoring for, for our component and an interpretable model helps us quickly react. Similarly, data schema changes need to be monitored to avoid broken contracts. To summarize, today we showed that predicting future failures and proactively mitigating them is key to averting the res resulting customer impact. There is no single proactive mitigation that will work in all scenarios. We need to probabilistically test different options online and at scale. To fill that gap, we introduced NARIA. On predicted band nodes, NARIA uses A-B testing and multi amp bandit approaches to automatically select the mitigation action that minimizes overall customer impact. On predicted hardware failures, NARIA achieves 26% improvement over, previ over previous static strategies. Thank you for listening to this talk. I hope you find it interesting and useful. We will now answer a few questions.